Hey, Foot Clan, it is the Christmas season, and we are in a giving mood, so we have decided to change the ultimate DFS pass to only 10 bucks rest of the year. It's insane. You still get week 16 and 17 and 15 and the playoffs. You get almost two months of DFS content for only 10 bucks. You have to check it out. Go to DFSPass.com. Hey, this is David Johnson, running back of the Arizona Cardinals, and you're listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, coming to you from the Playdraft Studios with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Welcome in. It is Thursday, December 14th, 2017. See how I got the year? Nailed it. You you did well. I got the current year. What show is it, Andy? 499. What? Are you out of your mind? It is the 499th episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. And dare I say it's the best. Oh, I was going to say, dare I say, 480 too many. 480 too many? Yeah. Yep. So 19 is just the That's right when up. we peaked. That's, that's when we peaked. It's been a downhill <laughs> roll all, ever since. Yep. Until tomorrow. Oh! Show 500 tomorrow. We've got some special stuff planned for you. Uh, Brooks has been putting together a little bit of a highlight reel from some of the early days. So you'll be able to hear uh, some of the ridiculousness of days gone by. You can hear uh, how much thinner we were as well. Can you? Yeah. You can hear? Mm-hmm. We were younger and thinner then. Mm-hmm. we got a great show. We're getting into the Week 15 matchups, Fantasy Forecast. Starts of the week on the show today. Some news and notes. We've got a great quick question. It's a who am I question. We'll see if you guys can deduce the player that I'll be describing. Give you some hints. And then Jason's boom, boom, kicker. How are you feeling today, Jay? Well, I am feeling a little bit under the weather, as they say. If you can't hear it in my voice then you've never listened to the show before. <laughs> uh, yeah, you sound a little rough. A little rough. You got – and now you're going to be hosting the DFS show today too? Yeah, yeah. So uh, – Thank Mike if, for that. If you're listening to the DFS show tomorrow, which, of course, you should be subscribed to, I won't have a voice for that show. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right, Twitter. It's a website, and you can follow us there at the FF Ballers. Our, our uh, website is thefantasyfootballers.com. Our Patreon. Our uh, community of listeners, jointhefoot.com. We're also on Facebook and Instagram. You can follow us over there on YouTube. All right, guys, quick question of the day. Who am I? You guys ready for this? Mm. Oh, Jason, yeah. we'll see if this sickness has gotten to your brain or not. <clears throat> 12th in rushing attempts, 12th in rushing yards, RB12 in standard scoring. Normally, that spot is reserved <laughs> yeah. for only one man, the Frank. But I do not believe that Frank Gore is up there right now. Yes, that is true. It's not okay. Frank Gore. All right. Clue number two. I jumped. I jump up to RB9 in half-point leagues. Okay. Uh, but I've only finished top 12 among running backs in four different weeks. Huh. The highest I finished is RB6. So he's a, a boom bust. Or just, just not, a a little top, bit of a, not giving you that top end. A little bit of a pass catcher. Well, this, lead, this leads me to believe that this uh, this player would be on an offense that is not extremely high powered, but the player is very good. That Come is on. a good deduction. All right, I have my guess. I have, I have two guesses. You want to give them to me before I give the third clue? Uh, Are you no, going to wait? Let's give the Foot Clan the third clue. Okay. Third clue. That being said, I've finished in the top twenty four. 76 percent of the time yeah so he's been very consistent i very I, I feel very confident with my answer i'm so torn between two players well, you only get one ah ah why don't you take a shot you right want to now. do it on the count of three jason i'm gonna yeah let's do that all right ready one two, two. three carlos, carlos hyde. hyde i love michael oh, keaton oh we love each other that my is other... true it's carlos hyde. oh yeah, yeah all right you're darn right and by the way I only had one guy the whole time. <laughs> the uh, I definitely didn't also think it could have been Christian McCaffrey. You trying to like tr trick me? Yeah, in this game. No, I I I was torn between those two. I loved players. Mike's thought because he said, "Look, a, not a high powered offense, but a very good player. He has fifty two receptions on the year. That's the same amount as Alshon Jeffrey, and more than T Y Hilton, Michael Crabtree, Amari Cooper, Stephen Diggs, and Marvin Jones. Kyle Shanahan's system. 
Yeah, I mean, Carlos Hyde. He's Hope, been okay. Uh, I think he's been more than okay. I think he's been... He is not a one. That's that's fine, but, but he's, he's been a really reliable piece of your... Right, you'd other, rather have him than Gore. Exactly, but there's there's players who, yeah, they rank as a, a one, technically speaking, but it's because they're, they've are they given you two games where they just went yes. full explosion, so their total points has them up in the top 12, but they haven't been in, as consistent as Carlos Hyde. You mean like Ezekiel Elliott, oh. who is still the what, <laughs> RB11? Right. 11. 11? Yeah, he's not been playing well lately. No, he's been more of a bust in recent weeks. Yeah, All he's, right. he's pretty good. Also, that Kyle Shanahan system. How about Joe Williams, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Who? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Thanks. I hope Carlos is back in San Francisco. <laughs> Me too. All right. FootClanVote.com. You can go. Two days left. Vote for us for the Best Social Media Award. It takes one second. Go to FootClanVote.com oh, if you want to support the podcast. FootClanVote.com. FootClan Assemble. It's Get very, in there. Very important. I to thought Mike. I could sneak it by Mike. No. Never. Never. But I couldn't. News and notes from around the league. All right. The Vikings tied in Kyle Rudolph. He has an apparent ankle injury. He sat out the final five plays last week and was spotted in a walking boot after. That's no good. You've already got a really bad week for streaming tight ends in the playoffs, so you really hope you've got one of those top four to six guys. I think there's about six, yeah. So we'll keep you updated as to the status of Kyle Rudolph, whether you'll be able to play him this week. It's not looking great. Bruce Arians has no idea if Adrian Peterson will play again this season. I read this morning that there has been zero progress in his injury. So that would it's be why he's, he's, he's questioning whether he's he an can. elder statesman. Well, normally he gets back from injury quick. That's the thing about Adrian Peterson. This is a different situation with the neck, and we don't know if he'll play, but he's probably not going to play this week. So. I would, I'd, I am ruling him out for the rest of the season. I lean As the official yes. doctor on the show? Yep. I lean far towards that uh, direction as well. I've been on WebMD. Oh, well, you should have said that. Did you click like the different areas of the body and check the mm -hmm. symptoms? I clicked neck, and it said bad. Bad. Okay, bad. yeah, you want to keep that in good shape. Chris Carson has resumed running. He is on IR, and this is not really fantasy relevant because he's probably not going to play until the playoffs if, as in the NFL playoffs, not the fantasy playoffs. Right. Uh, limited practice, guys. Some interesting players popped up on the limited list on Wednesday to be aware of. Jerick McKinnon, he only had one touch in the second half of last week's game, and this could have been why. He has a shoulder injury. Now, he was limited in practice, which is a good sign for him being available on Sunday, but you need to monitor that situation. I know I have him starting in two leagues. Good luck. Yeah, I'm not exactly <laughs> thrilled about that, but that's could, the fact. Could give a bump to Latavius Murray. Yeah, it could. And and if Kyle Rudolph's out, oh, yeah. you know somebody's going to have to catch some some dump off passes. So. Seven digs looks like a real good play this week. Sure, Adam Thielen limited with a knee thing. Don't think it's anything major. Uh, Jimmy Graham was limited. Lashawn McCoy was limited. Is, is, are there anybody on this list that you're actually concerned about? Jared Cook, not Mike, in the, Mike Davis, Devin not punches. in the limited section. Over in the no practice section, though, there are big concerns for me as well. Joe Mixon, it, Joe Mixon is still in the concussion protocol. I mean, middle. He was out middle. and around before practice and looked like he was going to practice doing things, and then he didn't. He got <laughs> marked as DNP. So yeah, it's, it's a situation to monitor, obviously. If he today's a out, big day. If he is out again, Gio becomes a great play. Amari Cooper, I do not expect him to play after re-injuring the ankle. The other big one for me is Leonard Fournette. Yeah, this this is a man who has who, he has a history of leg ankle injuries. Now this is a quad, so this is not the ankle injury that he was dealing with earlier in the season. But that injury essentially kept him out for a month, and now he has a quad injury. The matchup is you know it's so it's okay. I guess I guess every matchup is fine for Leonard Fournette. But you you have to monitor, especially today and tomorrow. You really hope that he gets at least one limited practice in this week, or you're gonna be freaking out. Would you rather it, let let's pick say, up Chris Ivory? If would, you have Leonard Fournette and you don't have your handcuff right now, shame on you. Rectify the situation. Sure, but what if your other option is someone like a Mike Davis? Would you rather start? Let's say Leonard Fournette is out. Would you rather go the handcuff route with Chris Ivory? Or the starter with Mike Davis? Ooh. 
I man, that's that's a tough question. I think I would go Mike Davis I, though. I I think I would as well, which because the matchup with the Rams, you know, get the handcuff. But there is a point where you'd rather have other assets on your bench. Don't drop them, of course, if they can be viable starters without injury. Great point. Anybody else on this list you want to talk about? Uh, Tyler Croft. I'm not expecting him to play, so he's not going to be in and, here. And Damian Williams being out is uh, good news for my start of the week. Yes. Bad news for me. I'm facing Kenyon Drake. Oh. <laughs> Fantasy Forecast. It's going to take a miracle for me to win in League of Record this week. Well, you've had a few of them yeah. already. Hopefully you're not spent. <clears throat> yeah, I probably am. Cash them um, out. All right, any updates on the Thursday night players? Uh, just a reminder, get them out of the flex. You know, if you're playing a Thursday night guy like Frank Gore, Demarius Thomas, don't throw them in your flex position. Throw them in an actual position. Yep. Wide receiver running back so that you have the ability to adjust your lineup. Yep. Uh, well, I've in and out on the show tomorrow to update you about those injuries. We talked about what we think is going to happen this weekend. And a reminder that there's game day alerts one hour before on jointhefoot.com. Mike does his periscope on Sunday morning as well. So you'll be able to uh, log in and view that via Twitter at the FF Ballers. We'll send out an alert. The only update I I have on uh, on this game is the fact that Frank Gore is playing on short rest after a gargantuan carry count. Sure. In that snow game, it, it's very similar to when I pumped the brakes on Adrian Peterson. When you're older and you don't have the days you're used to to recover from that kind of volume, uh, you know, it, I I literally wrote down realizing this short rest situation moved Frank Gore down in my rankings a little bit. So if you were teetering already be, between guys, maybe uh, make that a tiebreaker for you. And the the Broncos because the Broncos run, run defense, like we've been talking about a lot lately, is yes on the season you could run on Denver at the beginning of the year, but you can't anymore. No, it's the opposite. Is it the opposite? It's the opposite. In the beginning of the year, they shut down Zeke. Oh, they shut down guys lately. My you, goodness, is one of those I had in the flip flop. You had memory. in the flip flop. You, you. This can't is why I have on you Broncos. on the show, Jason. Yeah, the, the the three pack. We cut. We got each other covered. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, that's the thing. I liked Frank Gore last. You know, when we when we were looking at this game uh, yesterday, I thought Frank Gore was a really good play. But it, it didn't dawn on me that he had such a right. huge workload and now a short week to rest. That worries me at his age. All right, let's talk about the matchups. The Bears, 4-9, and nine, take on the Lions, 7-6 and six this week, 44.5 point over under. This is important, guys. It's a Saturday game. There are two Saturday games. Yes. You might not know that. There's a Thursday game. There's two Saturday games. There's Sunday games and there's Monday games. Oh, my. So we're going to stretch out this playoff week 15 as, as long as we can. <laughs> but big week last week for Mitch Trubisky. The Bears, uh, Jordan Howard had a great week. Oh, my. And really, that's where the fantasy relevance, maybe, you know, you can talk about Tariq Cohen a little bit, but what do you think happens against this Lions defense? They've been really struggling on defense over the last few weeks. They're 30th in the league against fantasy quarterbacks, giving up almost 20 a game. Running backs, 25 a game. That's 27th in the league. And then giving up points to the tight end. If you needed a flyer on Shaheen, would you be willing to take it? Uh he, he's that's risky. That, he's in that pool of that's Trubisky business. Uh, yeah, he's in that pool of risky. I got, I got Andy. <laughs> no, you got me to nod a little bit. That's yeah. all you got. Uh, that's all I need. <laughs> yeah. Mike doesn't need much got big, affirmation. Got a big grin over here, Mike. Yes. <laughs> but I I think Shaheen is in a group of risky tight ends that you you could pull the trigger on. It's it's not uh, it's not the worst matchup. Um, and you know Trubisky last week. I got a little bit of flack for saying he might be a, a decent play, and he was he was a great play. He was, he was a great play. Th this matchup again. I mean, the Lions have really looked poor lately against quarterback, and you know they've they've shut down the wide receiver. So Shaheen could be a play. I, I would really hope I have one of those top six, but right. outside of them, it's it's ugly. Jordan Howard, uh, heart pitter patters for Jordan Howard. This week, Andy mentioned just how poor the Lions' defense has been against running backs. Uh, but if I mean you like you can like Trubisky, but the wide receivers this is an avoid. Dontrell Inman seemed like the one as soon as he was traded. Then Kendall Wright was the one who had the big game, and you just I don't have faith to to flex 
any of the Bears wide receivers. All right, on the other side, Detroit. Look at Matt, Matthew Stafford over the last, uh, what, five weeks. He's averaging 294 passing yards a game, third best in the league. The Bears, we know their defense is okay. I mean, they, yeah. they basically stayed in games this year due to their defense. It's not been due to Mitch Trubisky and company uh, and the offense. We talked a lot about Amir Abdullah as well this week. I think you'll be active in this game, and I think that's going to really put the Abdullah Riddick situation as one that I'm not excited about. For as in playing either. Riddick, yeah, to play either Abdullah or Riddick. Right, I mean, I'm, I'm I think, not playing Abdullah, but it's the question for me is just: Do you have the confidence that Riddick will receive the bulk of the running back touches? Not really. I think if Abdullah's active, they'll use him, but they'll use both guys. And I'm just concerned that you're looking at a a flex risk at best with either player. Yeah, it, it's a absolutely a fair point. Where's your confidence level for for Stafford? Who uh, we I was very concerned about the situation with his hand. Now he came out. His numbers were actually very good. I think it was something like he had 82 percent completion. Yeah, he was last great. Week he was, that, I mean, that's for what fantasy, happens when Eric Ebron can catch the yeah, ball. Fair. For fantasy, he wasn't necessarily great for your team. Uh, do you have confidence? We well, just had the one touchdown, right, and and a couple but turnovers, three hundred and eighty-one well. yards passing. Yes. So, but the Bears' defense in the past six weeks only tenth against fantasy quarterbacks. He's safe to me. Yeah, I would just say he's a okay. safe start. I'm not looking that's, at him. That's what I'm asking. Do you feel yeah, safe playing? I do. I feel Stafford. safe starting him. Do you agree with that, Jay? I do. He's my number eight uh, quarterback on the week. And if you look back, uh, you know, all the way to the last 10 games or so, there's only been three games where he hasn't been a top 12 quarterback. So I, I agree. He is – he doesn't have that top five upside to me this week, but he is a, a safe option that I don't think is going to poop your team. The wide <laughs> So Golden Tate, he's in? Yeah. I would play Tate. I would play Marvin Jones. Okay. Um, yeah. Eric I'm, Ebron? Man. <laughs> Man alive. Eric Ebron, I, you know, look, if I said that I'm Can't willing to, you know, look I'd start at him rolling. Over I would say Shaheen or Ebron. Yeah, exactly. Ebron. Okay, I, Ebron I would sure. rather have Ebron. All right. Uh, Marvin Jones, we have as a consensus number 17 on the week, which is exactly tight. We have him. Jones and Tate tied at 17. Mm. So that's tough to do. That's, that's, that's the facts, <laughs> man. That's the facts. The Chargers, 7-6, and six, take on the Chiefs. One of those games I'm really looking forward to, and it's on Saturday. Whee! So it's going to get some prime uh, time. Prime time, yeah. Chargers on the road against the Chiefs. Chargers going one direction, which has been up. Chiefs going the other direction, although they did get a win last week. I talked about it on the show yesterday. The Chargers right now on defense, they're kicking some butt. They're dominating. And uh, – They've given up 12 points to the quarterback over the last six weeks. They've given up 19 points total to the wide receiver position. So Tyreek Hill is a boom-bust type of play here. And I don't think the upside on Alex Smith is very high. Yeah, I agree. It, I, I'd rather play Stafford, for sure, than Alex Smith in this game. That's, that's very fair. I would have to assume at this point that Casey Hayward will be trying to shut down Tyreek Hill. And Casey Hayward has just been stealing people's milk money all season long. He's been playing fantastic. Now, the, uh, the Chiefs' defense, though, they were a doormat to start the season as far as fantasy points. But things have improved. They're kind of middle of the road now. So do you have any hesitance? I mean, Ke well, Keenan Allen's not a start. So is Melvin Gordon. Is there any hesitance with Hunter Henry? With the Chiefs defense, seventh against tight ends in the past six weeks. Hunter Henry's a guy that I put in that top six that I hope I have. I okay. realize that they have been a, a, a plus defense against tight end. Uh, honestly, I have a little bit of hesitation over every single player in this game. I think it's a little bit more of a trap. This is a division game in Arrowhead. The offense of Kansas City hasn't been that good, but their defense is going to step up in a home game. So, you know, a 46-point under over-under for Vegas – I would lean towards the under in this game. Fair. Yeah, I was going to ask that question. So it uh, could be a bit of a, a divisional dogfight. So you're not willing to take the chance on someone like Tyrell Williams coming actually, off a monster game? Actually, if you look at the Chiefs and how they give up points to the wide receiver, they have actually done a great job on the wide receiver one. 
but the wide receiver two for a team, they've been one of the worst. So, you know, you, you've got to go case by case. So that says to me um, that Tyrell Williams might be a sneaky play in this game. If you've got a lower scoring game, you need that big play that could break something open. Tyrell Williams, uh, even though I take the under, might be uh, – you know, but I would rather do that in DFS, where okay. I'm because my playoff hopes. I don't want the glory play. You know, sometimes if it's week five, I want to play that guy that you're saying, "Oh, what are you thinking?" And I'm going to beat you. But if I lose, whatever, I can get back. You're in the playoffs. I want, I want more reliability. Yeah, in you know? week five, you you know, you you start that guy, he blows up. You can trade him. You can right have somebody long term. Right now, you're playing, and you. I was going to say the same thing, Tyrell Williams. You're waiting for one. Big play. Yeah. So he falls in the Keelan Cole category, the Deshaun Jackson category, and that's a little scary. You Certainly. may have your back against the wall and have to do it. But let's talk about this Bills matchup. Now, this well, you, game. Kareem Hunt. You have to at least mention Kareem Hunt. Is your optimism and your uh, your willingness to start Kareem Hunt, or I should say lock him in, is it back to 100%? Pretty much. I mean, you're just kind of in that boat. Okay. I, I can't see myself sitting Kareem Hunt right now. So, uh, especially if, the Chargers, if Casey Hayward and – look, the Chargers have been a bad rushing defense. That's been their one thing that they've kind of – the one hole in their defense all year long has right. been uh, the rushing defense. And if Tyreek Hill's shut down and, you know, it's Travis Kelsey and Kareem Hunt, I wouldn't be surprised if that's the offensive strategy. Yeah, if, if you look at the last six weeks, the Chargers are the number two against quarterback – Number two against wide receiver, but you, they're middle of the pack against running backs. That means that Andy Reid and the new play caller will not give Kareem Hunt the ball yes, at all. They'll, they'll go to the air. Yeah, they're, I mean, the, the fantasy the, everything cavity. says that Kareem Hunt should have a good game, which is the only reason I would not, not want to start him. <laughs> Speaking of Kareem Hunt, before we move on to our next matchup, I do want to thank today's sponsor, pristineauction.com. Look, a Kareem Hunt signed Chiefs jersey yesterday. Authentic signature sold for $78.68. Ooh. There was a – oh, man, we should have grabbed this one. There was a Joe Mixon signed Bengals jersey yesterday went for 52 bucks. All right. That would have been a great grab. All right. Buying low. Um, Juju Smith-Schuster signed Color Rush jersey. Oh, oh. star is born. 97.44. Color Rush. A uh, Love Bell signed jersey went yesterday for 73 bucks. I mean, they, talk about a great gift. Talk about a great way to outfit your – uh, your man cave, your your football room. Uh, grab an autographed piece of memorabilia. Hundreds of daily auctions on pristineauction.com. So you can go check it out right now. Sign up, free account, browse the auctions. You don't see anything you love today? Check tomorrow. I Absolutely. There, there's so much going up every single day at pristineauction.com. P-R-I-S-T-I-N-E auction.com. The other day, fellas, I went on to Omaha Steaks. I clicked on that search bar. I put in the code FANTASY. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, sometime later, I open up my door and I go, holy crap, that's a big box of meat. Because <laughs> Omaha Steaks, they're hooking it up this holiday season. It's fantastic. You're going to get a giant box, like I just said, a giant box of meat for forty nine ninety nine. This is the family gift pack. You can get it for 75% off, omahasteaks.com. You enter the code FANTASY in the search bar, like I said. But I got to tell you, everything that is in this giant box... <sighs> Two filet mignons, two top sirloins, two boneless pork chops, four boneless chicken breasts, four kielbasa sausages, four burgers, four potatoes au gratin, four caramel apple tartlets, one Omaha steak seasoning packets, plus you'll get four additional kielbasa sausages for free. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to upgrade your cooking situation, and you can do that right now with Omaha Steaks. You go to omahasteaks.com, you enter the code FANTASY in the search bar, you're going to get 75% savings. It's the gift, guaranteed. To be a hit. There may not be a lot of meat on the bone in this next matchup. Oh, no. The Dolphins take on the Bills in Buffalo. We watched the Snow Bowl last week. Now, we're not expecting that this week, no. but it will be 29 degrees out. And, uh, look, the Dolphins' defense right now is playing very well the past couple of uh, weeks and making big plays. I think they're a great start in this game. They go to Buffalo, and Buffalo's defense, it's been – Back on the kind of better performing trend. They've been kind of a back-and-forth defense all year. 
Where is the real upside? I mean, you know you're starting Kenyon Drake if he's all alone in this matchup regardless because even if the game goes the way last games or last week in Buffalo went, the running backs still had great games, Gore, McCoy. What do you expect from Drake? What do you expect from LaShawn in this game? And, and where are your other big starts, or are there any? Over the past six weeks, <clears throat> Buffalo has ranked 32nd against running backs. Yeah. Miami has ranked 31st. <laughs> so, Best friends. So this Co Cold weather. Might not want to throw the ball as much. This is going to be uh, the run-the-clock-out game yes. left and right. Said, meanwhile, both teams over the past six weeks have ranked top eight against fantasy wide receivers, at least top eight. The Dolphins at eight and the Bills at three. The Bills are a little bit inflated there due to the snowball where there were basically well, no passing attempts. But they're four on the year. Well, and I was going to say, I mean, those numbers are a component, but if you are giving up tons of fantasy points to the running back, it stands to reason even if your defense – your defense might not be really stopping the pass. It's just really giving it up to the run. So a lot of fantasy points don't go. Let's, what are you laughing at? <laughs> just imagining them. Guys, here's my plan. Here's how we're going to shut down the passing game. Give be, up. Be let really em, bad in the running let game. Let them through. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never see it coming. We want to up our stats. <laughs> uh, you're starting Jarvis Landry. Yes, I, st I still start Jarvis. I start him, but I lower... Any hopes yeah, for a monster Jason's game. low on Jarvis Well, this well week. part of the reason playing so well. They've scored a lot of points the last two weeks. Right? Exactly. I do worry that that we may be losing some of the value that's actually there for the Dolphins. <clears throat> they're playing well. Yes, they're on the road. Yes, it'll be cold. But Cutler was great last week. Yes, Drake was. was great last week. Jarvis was great last week. I think Drake has opened up that offense. But that being said, like you said, Mike, the against wide receivers on the year, the Bills are still number four. And so, coming off of a two-touchdown game, I think people might be over-inflating Jarvis Landry. Now, if I'm in a PPR, I'm playing him every week because he has such a reliable floor, and if he does get a touchdown, great, you're going to have a great game. But I don't think a big game is coming from Jarvis Landry, and I've had a lot of questions this week where you've got four or five different wide receivers, and you're in a half point where I'm choosing to bench hmm. Jarvis Landry. Um you know, but but maybe Andy's right. Maybe the the Dolphins are just legit. Maybe they're for real now, and they're going to have a a nice run to the end of the season. Is that how you see the Dolphins right now? Yeah, they're playing well. They're really playing well. The defense is is shutting people down and giving the offense an opportunity to make plays. You see Parker, Landry, and Stills now all involved. I Parker or Stills? It's <laughs> yes. I mean, if it was last week, I would have said Stills. This week, I'll say Parker. Because okay. that's how you have to treat those two. You're just <clears throat> going to flip-flop? Flip a coin. All right, on the other side, Tyrod Taylor is practicing in full and expected to be the starting quarterback for the Buffalo Bills. Dead last in the league in terms of yards per completion, 8.9 yeah. per. It's This is not a question about starting Tyrod. I would not advise doing that. You can play. I mean, he's just a two-quarterback league type of fellow right now. But Mr. Necessary... Charles Clay gets his quarterback back, and the Dolphins are among the absolute bottom of the barrel in giving up points to the fantasy tight end. You think end. Clay is sneaky this week? That's what I'm asking. Uh, well, we'll we'll talk about him. Oh, bet that's what I'm unaware. talking about. Bring in the fire. I very much believe in Charles Clay this week. He's very necessary. All right, we'll talk more about him in the starts of the week, it sounds like. The Packers take on the Panthers. The Battle of the Peas, as they call it. Uh, as I just yeah, called it, seven and six Packers. I see it build in the headlines. Nine and four <laughs> Panthers. Panthers are three point favorites. I was uh, listening to some uh, analysis last night. The Packers, as of today, they have about a ten percent chance to make the playoffs. They're really, really up against it. Even if they run the table, which, by the way, I believe have, has to be against uh, the Panthers and then the Vikings. And then I don't remember their last Week 16 matchup. Hmm. I don't know if you want to check on that. Yeah, I'll look it up. It's going to be a tough run, and they don't have the tiebreaker over the Falcons. They're out of the playoff picture right now. It goes Carolina, Minnesota, Detroit. Okay, so not none of those are easy matchups. But you do get Aaron Rodgers back in this matchup. So from a fantasy perspective, you're finally excited. You're finally able to roll out Jordy Nelson, Devontae Adams. I'm firmly on board with you guys. You start Aaron Rodgers in this game. Nice. You don't doubt. 
a Hall of Famer like that coming back and playing. He's been practicing. I'm all aboard. I'd still play Devontae Adams myself over Jordy Nelson. But would you play Jordy? I would play Jordy. Okay. Yes, I would. Um, I'd play Jordy. Would you play Jordy Nelson or Marvin Jones? Because I think I, I'd go. I would play uh, Marvin Jones. I I don't want to. I'd play Jordy. Did you, did you see your, uh, Aaron Rodgers had a quote. I don't remember it verbatim, but essentially was saying he thinks that Jordy still has a lot of juice yeah, I do left, too. And he's I, ready to get him the ball. I I love I love Jordy. I just don't want to overlook what Marvin Jones has been doing lately. That's fair. And well. get caught up in the name. Uh, I I I mean, look, they're they're two spots away from each other in my rankings. I have Marvin Jones just barely ahead, but I I like both players. Would like to play both players. Okay, we've got Jordy at our consensus nineteen this week. I just want to the my last point on Rodgers because we've had some people ask. Uh, you know how did Rodgers do when he came back? Because they didn't, they don't recall. It. Aaron Rodgers broke his collarbone, similar in 2013. When he came back, he put up 318 and two on the Chicago Bears. He just played like he plays. Yes. Well, he did have two picks in that game. Not so. That's not Rodgers esque, but still a great fantasy game. A lot of fantasy owners right now have Jamal Williams on the roster. Play him, as in those that are in the playoffs yeah. and, and competing for a title. You throw him out there, no matter what. Yes. He's been great. On the other side, you've got Carolina. Cam Newton, he's been good. You've got Christian McCaffrey and Jonathan Stewart. Now, a lot of Christian McCaffrey owners probably lost last week. Counting on him for big numbers, they went Jonathan Stewart's way with the three touchdowns. Devin Funches, auto start. Devin, oh, Devin yes. Funches or Jordy Nelson? I think Devin, we talked about this on the show fun. yesterday. I love Funches so much this week. He's scrumptious. Who is that? You oh, know? Devin S. Scrumptious? Maybe you've heard of him. So you're lighting him up. Yes. Any any trust in Greg Olson if you have him on the no. roster? I'd, I'm not playing Greg Olson. I've had that question plenty. It, it's I get it. He's Greg Olson. He could be fantastic. But now both games we've seen Greg Olson. He's re-injured the foot. I'm not taking the chance. Yeah, there's just a lot of guys. I would I, play Charles I Clay. I would play points. Ebron. I would play Jared Cook, Jason Witten. Yeah. There's a lot of tight ends. We have Greg Olson at 16, and that's about where he belongs. Yeah. yeah. And Vernon Davis ahead of him. Charles Clay, Eric Ebron, Rika Seals-Jones. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> so you feel good about your rising star, Jay Stu, this week, Andy? I'm totally content playing him, yeah. Right. I am. I, I'm content playing him. He's been double digits three straight weeks, six touchdowns in the last um, – Six weeks. Six weeks. So, right now, the offense is moving the ball, and they've been willing to give him the ball on the goal line. And, and that's something we've, we've seen go Cam's way a lot of the time. But three touchdowns last week, one on a big play, but two on the goal line. I, I think you're. I'm willing to take a shot with him. Do you guys agree, disagree? I actually. Kind of neutral? I agree. It's It feels bad. It feels gross. Yeah, it doesn't feel but great. I'm I mean, would you rather play Slamaj P. Ryan against Arizona? Man, that yes. I, I think I would rather play I Jonathan would. Stewart. Wow. Really? really? Okay. <clears throat> I just think he's got a better opportunity for touchdowns. But in this game, I also think Cam Newton is a, is a really solid play this week. No uh, doubt. The the defense of the Green Bay Packers, they're susceptible to what Cam does. Cam's at home. Uh, Devin Funches has looked good. And the Packers are going to be able to score with Aaron Rodgers. So this is, you know... Aaron Rodgers being there helps Cam's value because their offense is going to need to keep up. It might make them go for it more on fourth and one versus, you know, punting it away and playing the defensive game. So uh, Cam right now is is a top five quarterback. I believe I have Cam ahead of Aaron Rodgers in this same game. Ooh. Which, which one are you, are you two gentlemen starting? Rodgers. You said that was your line. I remember you saying that was your line. And I earlier in the week I had said Cam Newton and I – I think I still feel real comfortable with Cam Newton. It's Rodgers for me, <laughs> just taking a peek over at the Panthers' defense past six weeks, 28th against quarterbacks, 32nd against wide receivers. It's a close competition right now. I have I have Newton four, Rodgers six. You guys both have them back-to-back, four, five, and five, six. So I'll take is, the over in the game. You will? Fair. Yeah. I think it's going to be a fun one. I'm looking forward to it. This one, I don't know. The Ravens, <laughs> seven and six, take on the Browns, zero and thirteen. Gave away a game last week. Pretty much, if if you have Aaron Rodgers and you're starting him this week, I think you might want to give Hugh Jackson a high five, send him a 
Send him a gift box. <laughs> Send him some undies. I don't know because he crapped his pants. He needs some new ones. Yes, he does. But because of that, Packers win. They're still in the playoff hunt. Aaron Rodgers gets a start. And, uh, you know, now they're fighting for a win. But I don't know if they're going to get it here. The Browns are seven-point underdogs at home. Alex Collins has been outstanding. Alex Collins all day, every day. 76 he, yards a game since week 10. He's so good on film. He's been great for fantasy. He's even getting more work around the goal lines, even though you still have Buck Allen encroaching in that area and, and well, vulturing. The, there was the one vulture. The other one, the you saw at the play before, that Collins did the old tap the helmet. Right. Said, I need a breather, guys, and, and but the Browns, Allen got in. On you know the beginning of the year, the Browns were surprisingly yes. great against the running backs. Over the last six weeks, not so much. They've gone back to being the Browns. They're twenty fifth as far as giving up fantasy points against running backs. Alex Collins, I think, is a phenomenal play. Uh, I, there's just about no situation where you can bench him. This game is going to be a cold weather, somewhat windy game. It, it's it's not one of those games where no passing can succeed by any means, but it is a game where they will run the ball every chance that they are allowed to have, and Alex Collins will be doing his little Irish dance all over the Browns. <laughs> okay. Uh, nobody's throwing the ball deep more than Deshaun Kaiser. 21% of all pass attempts since Week 10. Number one in the league. It's one of the things I, from a fantasy perspective, love about Kaiser because you give him weapons now with Corey Coleman and Josh Gordon, and... One in every five throws is going down the field. Yeah, that gives you a chance to make plays. Now, and this, this is a game where, look, I I don't see the Browns getting way out in front. They're probably throwing the ball for the majority of this game. So I like Josh Gordon. I'm willing to uh, take a chance on Deshaun Kaiser. If you are a in a in a league where the quarterback is scooped up, he's somewhere on that Garoppolo level stream. I will for say me. this: I still like the Ravens' defense. Uh, mostly because the the Browns give up, you know, essentially at least two sacks a game because Kaiser holds onto the ball for so long. However, uh, the the Ravens had allowed, and this this stat comes out from Rich Rebar on Twitter. The Ravens it, had allowed eight plays, eight passing plays of over thirty yards all season until the past six quarters where they don't have Jimmy Smith and they've given up five. So it, it, things changed drastically, but I also accredit that to playing Matthew Stafford and Big Ben Roethlisberger. Deshaun Kai as well, I like his potential for the future. He's not he, those guys. He is not those guys. So I'm st I still have confidence in the pass rush ability of the Ravens. When are you getting your Corey Coleman jersey, Jason? Have you ordered that already? You know what? We need to get on top of it. I want Mike. I'm commissioning you. You're the resident pristine auction uh, purchaser for the studio. I By the way, a, thank you. I got my Alshon Jeffrey. You are welcome. Day. I want a Corey Coleman because okay. he is very, very, very good. I think he is a much better. He goes for wide receiver two prices over there on pristine. Yeah, auction. exactly. <laughs> we'll be able to scoop up sweet. I, look, I think Corey Coleman is a much better wide receiver than Josh Gordon. Oh, that's ridiculous. Come on. That is ridiculous. Why? I that's just something you're saying with your mouth. It's not something I'm saying with my mouth. And look, I'm not. I'm that, looking into no, your heart Josh right Gordon now, Jason. Josh Gordon has finished you, the number one before. You do not believe before. that. I'm not speaking for fantasy. That uh, I'm saying he's a better route runner. He can make no. separation. No. He's just not as big. He's not a giant beast of a man for fantasy uh, I've got Gordon ranked ahead of Corey Coleman this week, but I really like Corey Coleman is my point, and I don't think we could sleep on him as far as, you know, it's like I, we've said this. I, I You know, I don't want to repeat everything we've said this week, but we can't just give all the love to Josh Gordon because he's new and shiny and forget about what Corey Coleman has been able to do in his very few games. You know, in his career, Corey Coleman, you know, he, he doesn't even have a complete season of games yet. And his percentage of valuable fantasy games are really high. So I'm just saying, I'm not trying to throw shade on Josh Gordon. I'm not saying Josh Gordon isn't good. What I'm trying to say here is, I believe Corey Coleman is a great wide receiver. And okay. that's why we have a water bet this I've, week. I've sent you a picture just so you don't forget Josh Gordon. <laughs> I believe Jesus. Mike, Mike I'm has sent a picture I'm assuming that there of... are a lot of abs in this picture. <laughs> There's at least 32. Yeah. 32 abs. He's got yeah. a 32 pack. And there's only one man in the picture. That picture has to be Photoshopped. That is not. 
I, the, the, I, I took the picture. <laughs> I took the picture. Yeah. It's not you. I know that. <laughs> Texans. Not a selfie. Texans, Jaguars. Texans are 4 and 9. Jags are 9 and 4. Uh, the Jags are 11 point favorites. It's hard to write the story of the Texans winning this game. It seems actually like an impossibility. Yes, so, it certainly is. Uh, because of how the defense for the Jaguars is playing, they're even better than they've been on the year over the last six weeks. And uh, frankly, I, I'm i starting DeAndre Hopkins because yes. you have to do that. Um, Jason, you looked up a very kind of crazy stat the other day. You looked up the percentage of targets that go to DeAndre Hopkins from the various quarterbacks the Texans have had, whether it was Savage and it was in the 30% uh, area and then um, even Deshaun Watson it was in the 30 something percent area. yeah they're all 30 uh, uh, Brock Osweiler jumps in there though and he's like no guys I I'm only going to target him a quarter of the yeah. time ridiculous but <laughs> but TJ Yates in, in a small sample size was up almost at 60 percent <laughs> of the targets uh, are going I'm telling you that's how Hopkins I would play quarterback would, oh mine would be in the 80s <laughs> I'd yeah. be like snap one step drop obviously from <laughs> I'm not yeah. going to risk that it's Calais like, Campbell it's smash. A, it's a zero step drop. It's a zero I, snap. Here, drop. Here's what I'm doing every play. I just snap, take that one step drop, and I'm going to immediately fake it wherever Hopkins isn't. Like I'm, I'm just, uh, I'm pumping. Oh, it's a to, fake automatic every time. Every time I'm pumping wherever he's not. Every play, pump, throw to Hopkins. Pump. The they'll way never. Throw yeah, they'll Hopkins. never catch on no. to that. No. <laughs> so Hopkins, you start. You just can't not start the you know a, a top three wide receiver. It's not the great matchup, but he could still make something happen. He did it against Jimmy Smith. He did it against Patrick Peterson. I'm not going to doubt him at this point. And, you know, you put your trust in a guy like that. Yes. Otherwise. That's about it. Lamar Miller. Lamar Miller, Miller you, you're, you're in a situation you have to start him. No. Yes, no. you are. I don't think so. As, I a, think, as a running back, too. I, I, what, what are you going to do? I think if, you've, if you have options like Kenyon Drake, Alex Collins, Jamal Williams, well, guys sure. you've picked up off of if waivers. You the waiver hotness. If, yeah, you, if you're a waiver hotness team, you know, you, you're know you in the playoffs because you've been dropping like it's high. Mm -hmm. I think you will have the luxury to be able to take a Lamar Miller and say, this week isn't your week. Take some rest. We have him rest at 20, so that does fit your narrative there. We have him at, at, at 20, just at the back end of the running back, too. So if you are a player that has... Like you, you Rex Burkhead, you picked him up later in the year. Right, you'd go Burkhead over Lamar Miller. What, exactly. what about Johnny Stew? No, I would you go Lamar Miller over Johnny. I mean, that the up? volume is sure with Lamar Miller. Got it. I got Andy again. I didn't even hear it. What you was it? Cook up some stew. Ah. Uh, yeah. Oh man, I'm starving now. <laughs> I'm also on fire. Oh yeah, you're just killing it today. 499 shows in. You're you're getting better. That's true. You're like a fine homeless wine. <laughs> <laughs> fine dad pun he's wine. a fine dad pun wine on the other side though look the texans they're struggling against fantasy quarterbacks blake bortles mike you've been i'm so ready you've been all blake about bortles blake bortles this week. this week and then uh you know fournette we're monitoring the injury but when he plays he plays all the time that's kind of the right. situation when he's in there he has the majority of of all snaps second highest amount of carries per week since week 10 if he's starting, he's in. Uh, otherwise, Marquise Lee, D.D. Westbrook. If you had to pick between one of those two guys, you like Bortles. He's going to throw it to somebody. How do you rank the wide receivers in Jacksonville before we get into the starts of the week? Man, uh, obviously Marquise Lee has been uh, popping up on the on the injury reports very often, but that hasn't stopped him from having uh, some, some great weeks, 86 yards against the Colts and then 65 against the Seahawks, I would go with Marquise Lee over Westbrook, despite him being the new hotness. Yeah, I, I have them back-to-back -back in my rankings. I've got uh, Westbrook so wide 28. wide receiver three and four? <laughs> wide, I've got Westbrook at 28 and Marquise Lee at 29. It's really tough to call between those guys. And I'll be honest, I don't, I don't really love either. I like Blake Bortles, but he has enough weapons now. You've got a, a team across the field that's really susceptible to the tight end, so the touchdowns could go, you know, to oh no, not another Mercedes uh, Lewis could, game. Could, this could be don't another Mercedes it. Lewis game. Blake, don't you do have it. Keelan Cole, who's been getting downfield. Dede Westbrook, Marquise Lee. I love the fact that there are now multiple weapons that can be used for Blake Bortles' sake. I just don't like that for calling out which wide receiver is going to have it. Imagine the Jaguars. I mean, they opened the season 
It was the Allens as your one and two. Allen right? Robinson, Allen Hearns. Yeah, and now, now it's Lee Westbrook and Cole. And you you're know, okay. And you you're gotta, okay. You yeah. got to give a shout out to the Jag, the Jags GM because they have done a great job drafting wide receivers. There's no way D.D. Westbrook isn't a core <clears throat> piece of this team for a long time. That's my opinion. Hmm. Um, isn't Allen Robinson a free agent? Yes. So, and, but, well, him and Lee, both I, of our, our, their contracts are expiring. So we'll you see might what not they see do. either come back. They may draft a wide receiver. I bet, maybe bring one back. I bet Lee comes back. Okay. Really? Yeah. Over Allen Robinson. I do. It just, money. Yeah, the money, Allen Robinson. They're, well, they're both going to be looking for nice contracts, but Robinson has that year. Yeah. And it's going to be tough for, NF, for NFL teams to not overlook that. Oh, it'll be fun talking offseason stuff yes, and all this will. free agency. All right, let's talk starts. Starts of the week. All right, we're going to try to give you some names that can deliver for you in week 15. And a reminder, the rest of the matchups will be on tomorrow's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. So tune in tomorrow and you'll get the rest. I'm going to start at the quarterback position and I'm going to go with Case Keenum. Love it. Case Keenum is at home. Case Keenum is fighting for that number one seed. Case Keenum is delivering each and every week. Case Keenum is a Pro Bowl quarter, quarterback. Uh, what's that? What's a Pro Bowl quarterback? Quarterback? <laughs> quarterback. Uh, and Case Keenum gets to face a Bengals defense that is 22nd in the league over the last six weeks, giving up 18.6 points they're just, to the quarterback. They're beat up. And uh, putting them on the road. I mean, last week they were at home against the Bears, and Mitch Trubisky put up a fantasy-relevant week. If you don't think Case Keenum and Adam Thielen and company can have a good week, you're crazy. So I am all aboard Minnesota this week. Case Keenum, start of the week. All right, I have a question here for an audible. Okay, this is this oh, question comes in from okay. Jason uh, in Phoenix, Arizona. Omaha. I'm calling is, audible at the line. Is ah, it, uh, I see you. what you did. Yeah, I, you were, all I could think of was me. <laughs> they were just yelling <laughs> cities out. Is it okay <laughs> to make a start of the week Aaron Rodgers? Uh, only you know, if you, you know have what? him in your top three. I, uh, I will allow well, it. Well, let's go to the judge. Judge? I allow it. Allow all right. Barely. You okay, know what? Barely. I agree. You enough questions I agree because every team that has Aaron Rodgers has another quarterback that they've been starting. Yes. Yeah. Therefore, you're telling them what? Uh, what I'm <laughs> with telling this them, start of the week? What are you telling people that they don't already know with your start of the week? What I'm telling them is I'm saying that that the Carolina Pan Panthers have not been a good defense lately, and that Aaron Rodgers is not going to come back and be bad. It's just he's I'm not. Going I'm to changing to Johnny Unitas. So my start of the week was Dak Prescott. Joe Montana. And when I was making the argument for Dak Prescott, it was going to, you know, what? but would I start him over Aaron Rodgers? That question I've seen a lot. And no, I would start Aaron Rodgers even ahead of Dak Prescott. So this, this is where I'm trying to give people the confidence. If you've picked him up, Aaron Rodgers is a guy that you should start. You should not wait and see if he's back from the injury. That's why Aaron Rodgers is my start of the week. Fellas, I will start over Aaron Rodgers. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Big Ben. I almost said I said Bren. Yeah, yeah. you did. Good old Game of Thrones there. Uh, Big Ben. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Big Bren. Yeah. <laughs> Darth. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah. Tom Brady. <laughs> I love that. That's it. I mean, my fire is just so it, it's so hot right now. I don't. I my jokes. I don't your even. Your joke need to fire. Do it. Yeah. Uh -huh. Joke fire. All right. Who's your start of the joke week? My start fire. of the week. You know who it is. Because I'm so very excited. The BB gun. The BB gun. <laughs> Blake Bortles. The matchup is tremendous against Houston. And now you may you may have a banged up Leonard Fournette uh, uh, going up against a, you know, kind of middle of the pack rushing defense that the Houston Texans have. So I like Blake Bortles as a stream a lot. All right. Well, look, we're, let's gather around the Christmas tree. There's two presents underneath it, and you pick your favorite. Ooh. Start of the week at the running back position. Question for you. Can I shake these presents and see if one of them is rattling like maybe it's broken? Like its shoulders hurt? Yeah. <laughs> you can shake them and check them out. Okay. I'm staying with the Vikings. Latavius Murray slash Jarek McKinnon. Pick your favorite. I think Latavius. there's opportunity. Latavius. Well, it's, it's, I understand you saying that, but if, if Kyle Rudolph's out and McKinnon's fine practices in full today, you may be, you know, you may be actually wondering which one to open. And mm -hmm. McKinnon last week, seven carries for 46 yards. Had a great first half for fantasy purposes. Just had the shoulder injury. And Murray was not. Murray was not yeah. good. And th this is an opportunity 
against a uh, Cincinnati Bengals defense that is 30th in the league against running backs. We talked earlier. It was the Bills, right, and the Dolphins that were 31 and 32. Well, the Bengals, they're doing their best. 27 fantasy points. That's enough for both players to have a good game. That's the reality. Sure. That's enough sure. for both players to have a little Devonta Freeman, Tevin Coleman action. And despite the fact they've been sharing the backfield, I believe Minnesota's been eighth in the run since the switch over from uh, the Dalvin Cook scenario. So I'm starting up Minnesota's backfield, Latavius Murray, mm. Jarek McKinnon. Pick your favorite. Um, you got to lean Murray right now with the shoulder situation, but I think both could have a good game. Yeah, uh, I said this earlier, but my start of the week at running back is Kenyon Drake, a guy I loved coming out of college. I felt <clears throat> a little stupid uh, this, you know, his rookie year because I gave so much love to him. I really believed in the talent. They drafted him in the third round, and we've seen the talent come through. Now I'm really, really hoping, and I'm, you know, that Damian Williams does not play this week so that you can get the value out of picking up Kenyon Drake. But Drake has just been great. In fact, it's gone on longer than you realize. Since Jay Ajayi has left, even when Damian Williams was there, Drake was successful and involved since week nine, which is enough of a sample size to be sure of whether or not he's good or not. Kenya Drake is the running back six. Oof. The only guys ahead of him are Mark Ingram, Jamal Williams, Le'Veon Bell, Todd Gurley, and Alvin Kamara. So if you have Drake and you're not starting him, you're making a Shame mistake. on you. Yeah. Breaking news. All right, a little bit of breaking news. First, I, I should have mentioned it earlier. Alvin Kamara is going to play this week. Mm -hmm. Sean Payton came out and said he expects him to play. The breaking news is this. Joe Mixon returned to full practice on Thursday. Oh. Does not guarantee he's going to return this week. Very positive sign since he was held out of the Wednesday session. We'll know more about it on Friday, but... If you wanted him to have any chance of playing this week, now he plays Minnesota. Yeah, I was going to say I don't I don't like Mixon The thing this about week. Joe Mixon is that I given I'm not using the Jonathan Stewart outlier game as the, you know, complete precedent setting thing. Stewart had a big game against Minnesota last week. Mixon was getting 20 plus touches a game. Volume. It's hard to find that elsewhere, so if you're out there and you're saying I'm I I have an option of theoretic in a split backfield or Joe Mixon, that's a tough call for me. Yeah. I mean, Joe Mixon. It's very similar to me to Lamar Miller, where I'm saying you don't right. have to start him. If you've got better options, yep. I'd, I'd love to be able to bench him this week. But the volume says he is usually a start. And then Matt Forte returned to practice as well. All mm -hmm. right, Mike, give us your running back start of the week. So my start. I think I like it. Yeah. It, that's the thing about this start of the week. This is not an automatic start. This is not like this guy's top 24. You have to get him in the lineup. But things are trending up, and I like his opportunity if your running backs are not the cream of the crop. That's Jay Ajayi. Last week, 15 for 78. He was also in on his highest percent of snaps since the trade of ending up on the Philadelphia Eagles. And he gets to play the New York Giants, which is a fantastic matchup for the running back. I think that they, the team will have to lean on the running game with the injury to Carson Wentz. And I expect... Jay Ajayi to get the bulk of that uh, uptrending arrow. Why don't you shoot us uh, with your wide receiver start? Sure. It's, Why did it's, I say shoot us? Just shoot um, us with your start. Pew, 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 pew. Thank you. He's delicious. He's fun. He's Devin S. Scrumptious. <laughs> the Green Bay secondary. Here, here's my note. They are mucho bad. <laughs> That's your note? Yes. You mixing languages there, Bonjo? Yes. Yeah, I, I, I will destroy many languages, but I love Devin Funches. He is in my top 10 this week. Jason, who's your wide receiver start? My wide receiver start this week is Marquise Greatwin. Uh, oh, since gosh. <laughs> Marquise Goodwin, San Francisco 49ers wide that's receiver. That's your pun, man. <laughs> yeah, no. that's you. you this it's was, not. It's, this meant, it's a one-off, guys. No, that's, that's not forever. how we do things. I know. That's we beat him forever. in the ground. <laughs> yeah, I. You know, I've been searching Goodwin, a great win. I can't find him anywhere. <laughs> um, but that's what look, you're typing in. Yeah, Marquise Marquise great win over the last three weeks <laughs> since he's had uh, Jimmy Garoppolo. He's the wide receiver 18. He is the clear number one wide receiver for the San Francisco 49ers, and he has an excellent matchup yeah. this week against Tennessee. And when you dig a little deeper and you see, you know, I've been looking this week into what teams are giving up points to which version of wide receivers. You know, are they, are they going to the wide receiver one 
or is it uh, you know is is it like Kansas City where they're locking down the wide receiver one, but all the wide receiver twos and threes are are going nuts? Tennessee gives it up to the wide receiver one, and that is Goodwin. I think this is a plus matchup. I think you're you're going to be hard stretched. You know, usually in in most leagues you're starting three wide receivers, and if that's the case, it's going to be difficult to bench Marquise Goodwin. He is always one of those. Should I play? Should I not? Start him. I am going back to Michael Crabtree with my start of the week. I'm double dipping two weeks in a row. I'm going to tell you why, guys. I am, I'm going to go bold here. I know if I'm going to say Crabtree two weeks in a row, I need to bring it. Top 12 this week for Michael Crabtree. It, no, nay. Top 10. Oh, my goodness. Top 10 week nope, for Michael wait. Crabtree. Top eight. <laughs> Michael Crabtree plays, plays Dallas this week. Last week was his highest targets of the year with 13. Now, he wasn't efficient with them. It was a seven reception on 13 target day. Carr was bad. But Carr was bad, and he's going to be heavily targeted. I don't know if Cooper gets back out on the field this week, and if he does, it might not matter. 13 targets is what I'm looking at. Dallas, 26 in the league over the last six weeks. Fantasy points given up to the wide receiver position. 27 a game, and 20 of them should be Crabtree. That's good enough for top 10. I think Crabtree has a monster week. And, uh, you know, he's one of those players where I think he's going to be a difference maker for you. So if you're facing a flex decision, I'm going to boldly say, play Michael Crabtree. I'm going to stand behind him. And then at my tight end, I'm going to flip to the other team in that same game, and I'm going to go with Jason Witten. Uh, I need to give fantasy owners the opportunity to start a tight end that isn't injured, and Jason Witten's never injured. And that's really what it comes down to. You face an Oakland defense that I think is going to give up points. But the, the number one thing that I want people to know about that is they're 32nd in the league against the tight end. Mm. That's dead last over the last six weeks. They're giving up 14.3 points a game. Witten had a touchdown last week. The volume hasn't been there. But the opportunity is going to be there this week. So if you're in that, oh, no, no, no Tyler Croft, maybe I lost Kyle Rudolph, I think Witten's your guy. Yeah, for my uh, tight end start of the week, it is Charles Clay. Uh, tight end for Mr. the Buffalo Necessary. Bills, Mr. Necessary. He's had a couple of down weeks. Now, this is what Charles Clay does, right? Charles Clay has never been one of those. You've got to start him every week, week in, week out. He's just so great. Uh, otherwise, you know, he would have been drafted like that, and he's not. But last year in our listener league, I won a championship in those playoff cold weather weeks on the back of Charles Clay. Last year in those week 14, 15 weeks, if you don't remember, seven for 72 and a touchdown. Eight for 85 and two touchdowns. That would pace him at 120, <laughs> 120 receptions for 1,200 yards and 24 touchdowns. The old That's what he does in the playoffs. <laughs> but regardless of last year's playoffs. Sounds like he's going to be flexed in a lot of leagues with those <laughs> yeah, numbers. Yeah, this year, another cold weather uh, you know, game coming up where he is Mr. Necessary. Calvin Benjamin he's struggling with the knee problems. They he is not practicing today. Just yeah. saw a report he's practicing. But in the game, how often will he have to hobble to the sideline with his knee problem? I mean, that's what we've seen. Nine week to in, ten times. Out. Exactly. And so I think that Charles Clay, he gets his quarterback back with Tyrod Taylor, and this is a plus matchup. When I was looking, before I was looking at what tight ends I liked, I was looking at what matchups I liked, and the Miami Dolphins stood out to me because they've been – Kind of poor all year, but over the last uh, several weeks, the last seven weeks specifically, they have been much worse than they were in the beginning. So they're trending towards giving up more and more to the tight end. I, I don't love most of the tight ends after the top six this week, and Charles Clay is a guy I think you can start. Yeah, as I long as it. he doesn't have to face Xavier Howard. Whew. That guy was a beast. Dominant. Yes. AFC player of the week, by the way. Defensive player of the week. Well deserved. My tight end start of the week is baby hands Jack Doyle, he is, as of right now, my highest ranked tight end who is not an auto start. So he's not in those top six guys. The matchup is excellent tonight against Denver, who and they they've been Denver's been improving. You know, they can shut down wide receivers. I'm not expecting a great game from Hilton or Chester Rogers. I think that targets will will have to funnel to Jack Doyle. All right, without further ado. Jason Moore's Ironclad, Locked and Loaded, 100% Guaranteed Boom Boom Kicker of the Week. This week in the playoffs, you need a kicking giant. So make sure you don't bench the Falcons' Matt Bryant. (laughs) 
We are buffoons. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. Yeah, the judge likes it. Boom, boom. Thanks for listening to today's episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. For all your support, stay tuned for episode 500 and some special stuff tomorrow. We'll talk to you then and check out draft.com slash ballers for all of your DFS needs. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers.